video is designed for scleroderma patients like you to teach you about your disease by a doctor who is a leading specialist in scleroderma. You'll also learn about support resources that we have here available to you. Finally, you'll learn about the latest state-of-the-art advancements that our doctors and scientists are working on in their labs right here at the University of Michigan to slow or even stop scleroderma in its tracks. Dr. Dinesh Khanna, a world-renowned clinician, specialist, and researcher of scleroderma, will start us off. Hello, I'm Dinesh Khanna, a rheumatologist and director of the scleroderma program at the University of Michigan. Scleroderma is a disease that involves an overproduction of collagen. Collagen is a main structural protein found in your skin and your other internal organs. In scleroderma, your immune system is tricked into thinking that collagen is a foreign protein. Scleroderma affects approximately 300,000 people in the United States. About one third of those people have the systemic form that can affect your heart, your lungs, your gut, and your kidneys. Early symptoms of scleroderma include fatigue, loss of energy, joint pains, and weight loss. Other scleroderma-specific symptoms include hand swelling, puffy fingers, new onset or worsening of your acid reflux, and Raynaud's phenomenon causing your fingers to turn blue, white, and red. Your first appointment will last about an hour. You should expect a detailed history and physical examination. We'll perform certain examinations that are specific to scleroderma, such as a skin score or a skin pinch test, where different areas of your skin are pinched to assess for their thickness. Once the diagnosis of scleroderma is confirmed, we will discuss the natural history of the disease, what to expect over time, and different treatments that are available. There will be ample time to answer the important questions that you may have. Future visits will last about 30 minutes and usually occur every three to six months. If your disease progresses or you develop new internal organ involvement, you may need to see a specialist. We are supported by an excellent group of research coordinators. You will see our coordinators when you come to the clinic. They may greet you and inform you about our ongoing studies and how you may have an opportunity to participate in one or more of our clinical trials. You can find more information of the ongoing trials on our website. I'm very pleased to tell you that we have launched a new scleroderma peer mentor program. Here is Jody Fisher, our program manager, to tell you about it. Scleroderma peer mentors are volunteers who have scleroderma. They're trained by the University of Michigan Patient and Family Centered Care Department in how to help scleroderma patients cope with the realities of their disease, both physically and emotionally. They learn about HIPAA laws, which protect patient privacy rights, so all of your conversations are completely private. You can meet with your mentor in person face-to-face. -face. If it's not convenient for you to travel, you can choose to talk with your mentor on the telephone. Peer mentors can even set up a teleconference. A teleconference is like a telephone call right on your computer screen or smartphone, similar to Skype. Being a peer mentor is a really rewarding experience. The University Peer Mentor Program will provide you with coping strategies and someone to talk to. You are not alone. We've been through this journey and we can go through it together. I know you may be scared and you have a lot of new information being thrown at you, but we're here to help you cope and to share our experiences of how we get along in everyday life and how you can too. When I was a newly diagnosed patient, I started reading on the internet and learning all these things that were very frightening. But then I learned that there is life after scleroderma and that you can enjoy it and live every day to its fullest. Our research coordinators can also help you sign up for a scleroderma peer mentor. To be a part of this program, you can go to the University of Michigan Scleroderma website and there's a link there to sign up to be a peer mentor. And what will happen is that the email will go directly to the program manager, Jody, who is an awesome person to work with, and she will contact you and get you all set up. On the same webpage where you sign up for a peer mentor, you'll find a link to sign up for more information about becoming a mentor yourself. The Scleroderma program is dedicated to advancing research and improving care for patients with scleroderma and related diseases. 
I'm leading several international efforts to explore new targeted therapies in scleroderma. My colleagues and I are studying drugs currently on market for other conditions that may also help the symptoms of scleroderma. A problem that's going on in your skin and possibly in other organs is scarring. Too much collagen being made by the fibroblast cells in those tissues, in the skin, in the lungs, in other places. And one of those components of the machinery inside the cells is this enzyme called FUT1, which modifies other cell proteins. When you block the activity of this FUT1 enzyme, the cells slow down in their scarring function. So if we could come up with drugs that would be safe, we might have a new approach to treating scleroderma. We're very fortunate here at the University of Michigan that our physicians who take care of you, our patients with scleroderma, have the opportunity to work directly with researchers in the laboratory. To find the cause for scleroderma, I work with cells that are isolated from human skin biopsies, and these are obtained either from healthy subjects or scleroderma patients like you from the University of Michigan Scleroderma Program. From these cells, we can examine why they are sick and to try to help us identify key pathways or targets that are making them act abnormal. Identifying these specific targets and molecular pathways will allow us to develop new drugs for scleroderma patients like you. We are actually one of the few labs in the world that is actually able to do this routinely in the laboratory. And this is what makes the scleroderma research here at University of Michigan very unique. We identified several targets and genes in these blood vessel cells isolated from scleroderma patients. And um, this is very important for scleroderma patients like you because um, vascular complication is usually the first sign of symptoms that almost all patients would experience. And if we can develop drugs that target this pathway very early on, we can stop the disease at a very early stage. I'm a medicinal chemist and what I do is to design and develop new drugs for scleroderma. Our drugs prevent the process of fibrosis by blocking signals that come from the outside of the cell. And by blocking those signals, it prevents the cells from overproducing fibrotic materials such as collagen. Fibrosis can result from multiple signals outside the cell, and all signal in the cell through a cell protein called Rho, which leads to overproduction of fibrotic materials such as collagen. Current experimental drugs block only one of these signals, A, B, or C, while our drug blocks the common pathway downstream of Rho, shown by these two red arrows, and should therefore be more effective. After we've designed new drugs for scleroderma, we have to make them in the laboratory. And here we see one of our chemists, Kim Hutchings, making one of our new compounds that we will then give to Dr. Newbig at Michigan State University to test in cell models of scleroderma. We've developed compounds to the point where they work in animal models of fibrosis, uh, specifically in mice. And what they do is they prevent the development of fibrosis that's caused artificially by injection uh, of an experimental drug. And what we hope is that within two to three years, we'll be able to have these compounds in clinical trials. I'm a cardiologist and my area of expertise is pulmonary hypertension. Pulmonary hypertension is high blood pressure in the lungs. Normally, the blood pressure in the lung is much lower than the blood pressure in the arm. When the blood pressure in the lung elevates, that can put stress on the right side of the heart. Since you have scleroderma, you are at increased risk for developing pulmonary hypertension. About 10% of patients with scleroderma develop this condition. One of our goals is to diagnose pulmonary hypertension early in the course of the disease if it occurs in a patient with scleroderma. We are very aggressive about doing testing to make this diagnosis early. It's important because we have more than a dozen FDA approved therapies to treat pulmonary hypertension. And if we can get a patient on medication earlier in the course of the disease, before there's been a lot of damage to the blood vessels, over time, patients will do better and have a better prognosis. One of my interests is to try to figure out a test that would allow us to determine which of you is more likely to go on to develop this high blood pressure in the lungs. I've developed a type of echocardiogram or ultrasound picture of the heart that's performed 
both at rest and during exercise. What I'm looking at here is how the walls of the heart, especially the right side of the heart, are moving. Sometimes they're not moving in a normal way. My laboratory is currently developing a drug that's designed to treat a whole new pathway that I believe leads to the development of this disease. What I would like to be able to do with this information is to be able to provide you with a medication that would stop this disease in its tracks or even reverse it. I feel very fortunate that I can come here to the University of Michigan and get all of my treatment. Not only do you see the doctors in clinic, but these doctors are also participating in research that is working very hard to find a cure for scleroderma. Our program is also a world leader in designing clinical trials to target novel therapies for you and other scleroderma patients. Please visit our website at the bottom of the screen to learn more about our program and our ongoing trials. Through Dr. Khanna's work, the University of Michigan has become a leader in scleroderma research, and with his leadership, I am confident that we will continue to make enormous progress in this disease and ultimately be able to reach a cure for scleroderma. Here are some action steps we recommend you take as you manage your scleroderma. Be your own advocate. Learn about scleroderma from reputable websites, such as the University of Michigan Scleroderma Program, the Scleroderma Research Foundation, and the Scleroderma Foundation. Take your medicine as prescribed by your doctor and try to avoid herbal or homeopathic remedies. Rest when you need to. It's okay to say no. Consider signing up for a peer mentor. Mentors can help you cope with scleroderma. Keep your doctor appointments even if you're feeling well. Your disease could be progressing even without symptoms. To make an appointment, have your doctor refer you to us. After we process your paperwork, we will call you for an appointment.